Northampton is a beautiful town in the East Midlands. Although the settlement is widely unheard of, it was named one of England's hidden gems, due to a number of interesting cultural hotspots available to the public. The town isn't a city, but it is the largest town without city status in the UK. And this doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of exciting attractions and opportunities waiting to be visited. Just an hour's train journey from the centre of London, Northampton is one of the greatest undiscovered places to travel to in England. So, here is the list of 10 best things to do in Northampton, England. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Here we go. Number 1. 78 Derngate. From 1916 to 17 the Art Nouveau designer and architect Charles Rennie Mackintosh reworked the interior of this Georgian house for the style-conscious businessman Wenman Joseph Bassett Loke. 78 Derngate is the only house in England designed by Mackintosh and in 2003 it was turned into a public attraction after 18 months of restoration. One reason 78 Derngate is treasured is that it was Mackintosh's final major commission and its wooden panelling, stained glass and enamel work point to a designer at full maturity. Best of all are the hall lounge and its wooden staircase screen, and the guest bedroom, decorated with black, white and ultramarine stripes. The house was groundbreaking in other ways as it had electrical conveniences, indoor plumbing and central heating decades before they were commonplace in homes. Number 2. The Guildhall. Northampton's constant growth into the 19th century required a new town hall, and this was designed in the neo-Gothic style by Bristol's Edward William Godwin when he was just 28. The facade has long rows of pointed arches with ornate tracery, as well as statues and friezes depicting monarchs with a historical association with Northampton. You can also locate a memorial to Princess Diana, whose family seat is a few miles away in Althorpe. Try to arrange a tour to view the interior's stained glass, coffered ceilings and coats of arms, as well as the magnificent Great Hall. This is embellished with Gothic-style murals of key historical figures, rose windows, chandeliers and has a ceiling of gilded panels and delicate branching patterns. Number 3. Northampton Museum and Art Gallery. When we wrote this article in 2018 the Northampton Museum and Art Gallery were closed for modernization, due to reopen in 2019. But it would be a shame to be off the list because, for one thing, it has the world's largest collection of footwear and exhibitions of old-time shoemaking instruments. Celebrating Northampton's leather trade there's also examples of leather craft from all corners of the globe and details about Northampton's new town and rebirth after the Great Fire of 1675. In the gallery are Italian Renaissance paintings from the 15th and 16th centuries, while you can also cast your eye over decorative arts like porcelain, pottery and glassware. Number 4. Phipps Northampton Brewery Company. This ale and the stout brand have been brewing in Northampton on and off for more than 200 years. The company goes back to 1801 and opened the Phipps Bridge Street Brewery in 1817. And although that closed down in 1974, the brand has recently started making beer at the Albion Brewery on Kingswell Street. Head to this beautiful brick industrial building, dating to 1884, for tours any day of the week except Monday to learn about Phipps' close historical links to Northampton. The Albion Bar opened in 2015 and pours Phipps' famous ales and stouts, as well as a new line of gin distilled by the brand, coming in dry, oak-aged, raspberry, elderflower, slow and rhubarb varieties, depending on the season. Number 5. Abington Park Museum. This museum is in Abington Park's 15th-century manor house, which was once home to Elizabeth Bernard, granddaughter of William Shakespeare. She was buried in 1670 at the Church of St. Peter and Paul, just next door. 
The house has lived through plenty of changes, partly because it housed a lunatic asylum in Victorian times. You can enter to see the oak room, panels with oak as it would have been in the 1700s and collections for Northamptonshire's military history. There's also a fascinating Victorian cabinet of curiosities, while in 2018 the museum staged a temporary exhibition about Northamptonshire's historic leather-making trade. Number 6. The Holy Sepulchre. A few streets north of the Market Square, the Holy Sepulchre is Northampton's oldest building and one of only four Norman round churches in England. It was begun by Simon Ida Sorn Lees, Earl of Huntingdon Northampton at the start of the 12th century. Simon, Ida Sorn Lees had just returned from the Crusades, and the circular design of the church was based on Jerusalem's Holy Sepulchre. Over the last 900 years lots of alterations have been made, most of all by the Victorian restorer, George Gilbert Scott. In the centuries after the church went up, a nave, aisles and a chancel were constructed to the east. But the Norman circular church remains in the baptistry, and there are original windows on its south and north porches. Number 7. Castle Ashby Gardens. Castle Ashby is an Elizabethan prodigy house from the second half of the 1500s with later Palladian extensions. Bold houses like this were built by Queen Elizabeth I's leading courtiers, and the Queen herself visited in 1600, while King James I came in 1605. Generally, the house is something to admire from the outside as it only opens to the public by appointment. The astonishing gardens at Castle Ashby are open 365 days a year and cover 35 acres in the 10,000-acre estate. You can go on a lingering stroll through the Arboretum, Secret Garden, Butterfly Garden, Theatrical Italian Gardens and Walled Garden where there's a tea room. The gardens have a menagerie, open in summer and inhabited by marmosets and meerkats that youngsters can feed. Number 8. Althorpe Estate. Briefly, from July to the beginning of September, the Althorpe Estate outside Northampton opens its gates to the public. It was last altered at the end of the 18th century, but there are beautiful hints of the previous Tudor building in the woodwork of the picture gallery. This space is 35 meters long on the West Wing's first floor and has a top-notch collection of art amassed by the Spencers, you can view portraits of James I and Charles II by John de Critz and Mary Beale and War and Peace by Anthony van Dyck. The fated French landscaper André Le Notre laid out the grounds in the 17th century, and on the island on the round oval lake is the grave or maybe the most famous Spencer of all, Diana, Princess of Wales was laid to rest at a spot marked with a solemn Doric temple. Number 9. Northampton Market. People have been trading on Market Square in Northampton since 1235 after a decree by Henry III ordered the market to be moved here from the All Saints Churchyard. This places it among one of the oldest continuously running markets in the UK, and you can keep the tradition going from Tuesday to Sunday. There are 42 stalls selling a wide assortment of goods, like fruit and veg, meat, eggs and cheese, or freshly made food like fish and chips and pies. There are clothing stalls, haberdashers, jewelers, bike mechanics, people selling collectibles and more besides. Number 10. Coton Manor Garden. If your enthusiasm for genteel country estates is undimmed, Coton Manor Garden is a mere 10 miles from the center of Northampton and more than warrants the trip. The garden was plotted in 10 acres in the 1920s around a 17th century manor house. That noble building with mullioned windows is the focal point of the gardens, and its walls are climbed by rare varieties of roses, clematis and shrubs. There are also graceful terraces of York stone erupting with color in the summer thanks to their agapanthus, heliotropes, pelagoniums, salvias and verbenas. Water features abound, in the ponds, fountains and natural streams, and at the start of May, the bluebell wood is a delight, while the wildflower meadow comes into its own in early to midsummer. The last word. So, 
Guys, this was the best list of things to do in Northampton. Hope you will like it and appreciate it. People who come to this city are amazed by all of the awesome things there are to do and see. With the vast amount of history and beauty contained in these areas, there's surely more than enough to explore and learn for any length of stay. Any combination of these options will construct a great, relaxing vacation. So, if you love to travel and you want to see the whole world then Tripa is the channel that gives you a list of the best places to visit in the world. Make sure you subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for latest upcoming travel videos. Bye bye, see you in the next video.